Excuse me, if that's an unstable overclock, then I'm Mary Magdalene. So as you're probably aware, the FX series of CPUs is supposed to be really fun to overclock. So let's see exactly how true it is ourselves as today I will be overclocking my FX8350 and hopefully seeing some good results because I've actually never overclocked it in the, what, eight years or so that I've owned it now. So I urge myself to see exactly how far I can push this thing. So let's go over our setup here. For cooling, of course, we need something super strong to tame the 125 watt TDP FX8350. So I went with the Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3, which I recently reviewed on the channel, which I highly recommend you check out. It's going to be up in the iCards. The graphics card doesn't really matter much. It's just a Radeon R9 280X. And also we have ourselves an Asus M5A97 motherboard, which, yes, I know, is not the best for overclocking, but it's the only FX compatible motherboard I have. And to test, we'll be using both Cinebench and Time Spy. So first things first, let's run those tests at stock speed to see what it's like. So we got the base results and uh, yeah, as you can see, they are not the best, but hopefully we'll be able to improve them. And I'm especially curious about the 3D Mark scores because as we all know, the best part of 3D Mark is being able to compete with other nerds to see whose nerds hardware is the fastest. So I'm hoping that by the end of this, I'm gonna have the highest score for the FX8350 and R9280X combo. Here's the leaderboard on it. Uh, yeah, seeing how the top score is over 3,000, we have a lot of ground we need to make up. So first things first, I actually want to try this OC tuner mode, which automatically overclocks the CPU. Okay, there we go. Cinebench R20 is a go. And as you can see, our OC overclock did work. We are now boosting all the way up to 4.3 gigahertz, up from the 4.2 boost clock of the FX8350. And now I honestly forgot how long it, uh, takes to complete a Cinebench run on such an old CPU. Well then, and it is done. And the final score is uh, not much higher than our original. Okay, looks like we're gonna have to do quite a bit more work, but first let's do 3D Mark as well. I'm just kind of like touching around the heat sinks here on uh, the PC, which yeah, I know you're not supposed to do, but like whatever. The hardest part seem to be the VRMs actually. So I may, I am kind of tempted just to get a fan and just alight and just make it go straight on the VRMs. Maybe that could help. Okay, it's almost done. Let's see how our automatic overclock did. Drum roll, please. Come on. And the final score is, ooh, um, hmm. Okay, yeah, we definitely have a lot of work to do on the CPU. Okay, forget going into BIOS and navigating that horrible interface. Let's just use the AMD Overdrive software, which was made back in FX days. It's like the predecessor to Ryzen Master. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, now how far can I actually take the multiplier on 1.4 volts? Let's try 23. Um, okay, this is a good sign. We are stable, at least on the desktop, at 4.6 gigahertz. So, that should give us quite an advantage in Cinebench. Though again, I'm not an expert on overclocking, especially this CPU. So there's a good chance that we're going to be unstable at 4.6 and we're just going to crash and burn. I actually did something right for once. It's stable at 4.6. And honestly, our temperatures are still manageable. We're at 52 degrees. And we are done. And we have 1289. That's actually pretty good. It's like 100 points more. Nice. Now let's see how it's going to perform in 3D Mark though. Actually no, before we do that, seeing how it's obvious that it is stable at 4.6, uh, let's just crank it up a bit more, shall we? Let's go to about 1.47 volts. A 25 times multiplier? I am definitely going to fry something before the day is over. But... We're doing it. <laughs> we are at the magic 5 gigahertz number. Oh boy, I, I am genuinely scared of this. I mean, there's no sparks flying off of it, so at least that's better than that one PC build which I did here on the channel, which you haven't, if you haven't checked that video out, where I had a graphics card set on fire, you definitely should. It's gonna be up in the iCards. Uh, it's just frozen. Excuse me, if that's an unstable overclock, then I'm Mary Magdalene. 
giving. I totally knew that's not going to be a stable overclock. Yeah, I, I, I definitely know what I'm doing here. Yeah, it's like full on crashed. Can't even control the lead out of it. Well, let's try again. Okay, so let's do 1.5 volts, 23.5 times multiplier. Let's see if it does anything. So in less nerdy talk, that basically means that we are boosting to 4.7 gigahertz. And even without doing anything, apparently we had a 55 degrees already. That's that's not good. Ooh, sharp to 66 there. Okay, and looking pretty smooth. The frame rate is dropping real hard now. But that's still looking way better than before. Okay, what kind of score do I need again if I want to get into the top 10 at least? 2700. That's how much I need. I need 2700. There's no way I'm getting that much with this kind of overclock. I think I need to push it a tiny bit further. Plus, I have the uh, disadvantage of just overclocking the CPU and not the GPU. And yeah, that is, uh, that is still not great. Okay, next attempt. Overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz, still sticking to 1.5 volts, plus I increased the power limit on the graphics card by 20% using Afterburner. Let's see if this will finally give us the kind of results I want to see. Because the CPU scores are getting really good, but now it's our graphics card that's kind of uh, hurting us. And actually, no, scratch that. Let's try running at 4.9 gigahertz and just run to the bench first. So we then don't have to be disappointed when uh, 3D Mark crashes or something. Like, what was our previous score again for Cinebench? Uh, 1196. Yeah, that's gonna get absolutely destroyed. And I don't want to jinx anything, but so far it's stable. It's stable at, uh, what they say, 4.9? 1. Uh, 1.5 volts, 4.9? And it's on a board that's really, really not amazing at overclocking, supposedly. And here I was planning on buying another board with better power delivery because I thought that this poor M5A97 would never be able to really overclock it too far, but it's really proving me wrong. It's getting really loud though. What kind of temperatures are we on? Oof. Yeah, remember how we started this journey at around 30 degrees? Yeah, now we're easily reaching 70. Mmm, that smell of warm electronics. It's, it's really nice actually. It's a bit worrying. But it's nice. Okay, we're done and 13.43, ladies and gentlemen. That is actually not as far as an improvement as I imagined, but still. Okay, let's finally start time spy and see what it says about, about all of those changes. Honestly, it has kind of been going too smoothly, almost. Like at 4.9 gigahertz, I was almost imagining uh, sparks flying everywhere. Or imagine what happened if the Sussexes returned to the Royal Palace. That's what I kind of imagined to be going on here on my PC, basically. Alright, topical joke ticked off. As a reminder, if we at least want to come in a top 10, we need at least 2,772 points overall. And the person who isn't uh, 10th got 3,581 on a CPU score alone. So if I beat that, I guess I'll be, I'll be happy. And, okay, come on. Show me the good stuff. And we got a mere... 100 points more. You know, okay, you know what? To finish this off, blaze of glory, 5 gigahertz, let's do this. Okay, so it looks like we won't be getting anywhere in 3D Mark, but I want to see if you can at least overclock a CPU like this all the way to 5 gigahertz. So here we are running 5.1 gigahertz actually, and we're going to see if it's stable in Cinebench. And um, the answer is no, but you can still see that if you have a decent enough cooler and probably a decent motherboard of decent power delivery helps, you can get an insane overclock going on the FX 8350. Like the rumors didn't lie. I'm honestly surprised myself how far it overclocked even with my limited knowledge of overclocking this chip. And of course, some good thermal paste helps as well. And you want to know what thermal paste I use in this? Well, the best of the best, of course. And soon I'm going to have a video talking about which thermal paste is truly the best because I have gathered all of the top contenders and benchmarked them one after another. So definitely so subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. So you know which thermal paste is truly the best and which one you should use if you're mad enough to overclock this past 5 gigahertz or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, there will be probably a part two where I get a better motherboard, uh, tinker around some more stuff, probably try and figure out some kind of overclock for the graphics card so we can at least make up some uh, ground and 3D mark there. And also if you have any like, you know, voltage and 
uh, multiplayer combos that work for you with this chip, definitely do let me know. So I try to recreate them myself. And if you want to help me afford stuff like, you know, a new motherboard to run crazy projects like these on, then make sure to check out my Patreon because even one dollar a month goes a long way in having my channel and I to make way better videos and also videos on way more interesting topics. I'd also love to thank my existing Patreons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, LKB, Naomi Sushi, Tiffany Jacobs and Wolfie. Thank you all so, so much. Down in the video description below, you're also going to find Amazon Associates links, where I'm going to link down to this CPU cooler, along with our old customs affiliate link, and also our Discord if you want to talk to me or others like this or whatever else really. And that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.